So you're moving to Boston and you're curious about Seaport. What's it like to eat, sleep, live, work, play in the Seaport District? Good news for you, that is exactly the neighborhood we're focusing on in this video today. So let's get into it. Hey there, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is Jacob Pystrup. Real quick, if you are moving to the Seaport District, buying, selling, leasing, whatever it is, and you want help with that process, give us a call, shoot us a text, send over an email or a DM, whatever works for you. My group's number is right there. Email, phone number, whatever works for you. Let's get in touch and let's start that conversation. So let's get into the video about Seaport and make sure you stick around to the end for a couple things you wouldn't consider uh, about Seaport before you actually move here. So Seaport, the Seaport District, the South Boston Waterfront, those are all synonymous. The Seaport District is basically Boston's newest, coolest, modern, expensive, new neighborhood in town. Very modern, lots of new development, lots of stuff being built there, big glass buildings, mixed use, high-end condos and apartments for lease. It's become a very kind of chic, luxurious new neighborhood in the Boston Metro. I mean, you got these new buildings, these new condos, high-end restaurants, all sorts of stuff to do right on the water looking out over the ocean. It is a beautiful part of town. Now, like I said, a lot of it is very new. It's been built up and you know, it used to be very industrial. There's a bunch of parking lots and stuff like that warehouses, you know, factories kind of in the 90s wasn't really a neighborhood people lived in. And nowadays it has definitely become a much more popular place to live, lots of stuff being built. Um, so with that being said, it is new. So if you are someone moving to Boston and you really prefer kind of that traditional, historic Boston brownstone kind of lifestyle, Seaport probably isn't the place for you because it's new, it's modern, you know, it doesn't really match that kind of traditional, historic Boston vibe. Now, I will say within the Seaport District, there is the Fort Point neighborhood, which is very different from the rest of Seaport along Seaport Boulevard. Now in Fort Point is where you will see a bunch of these brick, 100 year old buildings that used to be factories that have been converted into these nice industrial lofts. So you kind of have that mix between the modern and that old historic building in the Fort Point area of Seaport. It kind of has this, you know, eclectic kind of artist's loft kind of feel that you will see in some of these spacious, big open concept lofts in these old converted buildings around Fort Point. So it's definitely a very different lifestyle compared to the new luxury, you know, full service buildings along Seaport Boulevard right around the corner. But if you prefer that kind of, you know, historic, you know, exposed brick kind of industrial loft kind of lifestyle, then you will find that perfect for you in the Fort Point part of Seaport. Actually used to be a fort on Fort Hill back in colonial times. There was a fort, the fort got destroyed, got torn down, the hill was leveled, and nowadays kind of the land that you have these buildings on shoots out in the ocean like it jets out a lot more than it did back then because they used a lot of landfill to kind of build up the piers, build up the seaport neighborhood to push it out further into the water than it was back then. So they kind of expanded um, the shoreline for building, you know, the seaport neighborhood, which is something to know about seaport. It's built on fake land. It was literally landfill that they used to build up the seaport area and the piers and everything that's right there along the water. It's, it's all very man-made. Now, the seaport lifestyle, living in seaport, what is there to do? So yes, like I said, you have, you know, this concentration of new buildings, new office space, high-end condos and apartments all within the same vicinity, lots of high-end restaurants, bars, clubs, places for entertainment, um, fitness centers. If you like Equinox, there is an Equinox in Seaport as well. There's the Institute of Contemporary Art. Definitely a cool place. I'd highly recommend checking it out. Whether you live in Seaport or you're just visiting, definitely check out the museum. There's the Children's Museum and Martin Park. Again, cool place to check out if you're in Boston. And you've also got Fan Pier Park, which is a very picturesque kind of Instagram worthy spot in Seaport. The reason being it is right on the water and it looks over to downtown Boston. So you get great shots of downtown Boston, the whole Boston skyline. If you see people with pictures kind of along the water with Boston background, 
this is probably where they would take it because it's a very popular spot to go. Also beautiful. Now, if you are in Seaport, kind of navigating your way around, trying to figure out what's what, um, you got three main roads going through Seaport horizontally, and those are Seaport Boulevard, Congress Street, and Summer Street. All three of those go horizontally through Seaport, and they each connect to downtown Boston if you cross over the bridges over the Fort Point Channel, which is the body of water that kind of separates Seaport and downtown Boston. Cross the bridge, you get into the Seaport District, and those are the three main roads that go kind of horizontally through Seaport. And then you've got A Street, the South Boston Bypass, D Street, and E Street kind of being the bigger roads that go vertically kind of north-south through Seaport, which will take you down south towards South Boston and then towards Dorchester if you go further down south from Seaport. If you take any one of those going towards South Boston, you will probably drive past the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center, which is a huge building for events and stuff that you will see in Seaport. And then you've also got the World Trade Center Pier, which is kind of uh, directly facing the Exhibition Center. It's just further north. It's on, like It goes out into the water on the pier. So you got the World Trade Center Pier right there as well. Now, if you are moving to Seaport, obviously I'm sure you're wondering, you know, how far does your money go for purchasing and for leasing? What do you get for your money in Seaport? Now, like I said before, it is kind of up there as far as prices in Boston. So if you are looking kind of at the lower end of the spectrum with a studio for purchase, anywhere from about the 500,000 to $800,000 price point in Seaport. This will obviously be the smallest option in Seaport, um, probably anywhere from 450 square feet to 600 square feet on the bigger end for a studio. And to lease something of similar size and quality in Seaport, expect it to be around 2,500 a month on the low end up to 4,000 a month on the high end. Something on the high end in Seaport would likely be the Alex at Echelon. And just a quick side note, so the Echelon at Seaport is one of the newest developments they just did. Huge, um, it's three separate buildings, um, two of which are for condos, which are 133 Seaport Boulevard and 135 Seaport Boulevard. And the third building is the Alex at Echelon. So the Alex is the leased building. So this is where you have your rentals rather than your sales at Echelon. So the rentals at the Alex are anywhere from about 3,900 a month to 12,000 a month for the penthouses. It's pretty much the newest building in Seaport. Um, not the most expensive though. If you want expensive for condos, that'll be at 22 Liberty and 300 Pier 4 Boulevard in Seaport. But I mean, Echelon and the Alex at Echelon are beautiful. They have phenomenal amenities. It's gorgeous. It's brand new. I mean, it's, it's a gorgeous building in Seaport. Now for a one bedroom unit in Seaport, you're gonna be starting most likely at the higher end of that studio range. So, you know, between 600,000 and 700,000 to purchase on the low end, up to anywhere around 1.5, 1.6 million for a one bedroom condo in Seaport. Now you will see some higher priced one bedroom units um, at a place like 50 Liberty or 300 Pier 4. They will be, you know, 2.1, 2.2 million and above from there, but they are bigger than the typical one bedroom unit. So these could be 1,200, 1,300 square feet. So bigger than the typical one bedroom between 700 grand and 1.5 million. So like I said, those $2 million one bedrooms are bigger in size. The typical one bedroom would be probably 600 to 900 square feet, anywhere from 700 to 1.5 million. And to rent a one bedroom in Seaport, we'll start at about 3,000 a month. Um, a lot of options will be between you know, 3,000 and 5,000 a month. And you will have some you know, of the bigger options um, in the 6,000s and 7,000s a month for a one bedroom lease. Now a two bedroom condo at the very minimum will likely start at about $1 million, but realistically they start at about 1.3 to 1.4 for a lot of your options and they'll go up to about 3.5 million. Again, that's kind of the biggest price range you'll see for two bedrooms with the top of the market being kind of five to 7 million. Again, bigger units, much bigger square footage. That's kind of the higher end of the two bedroom condos you will see in Seaport. And you will also start to see some variety with size. So a two bedroom in Seaport could be as small as 800 square feet and it could be as big as 2,400 square feet. So you will start to see a lot of variety in size and price here and for rent. Expected to start at around $4,000 a month up to as much as $12,000 a month for a uh, two bedroom lease. And finally, anything three bedrooms or more in Seaport, not as common and also the most expensive option to purchase or rent. 
Again, you'll see a lot of variety in size and price, anywhere from $2 million to $10 million, um, with the majority of those sales being between about three and a half million and $7 million for those condo purchases. And for rent, you know, again, it depends, lots of variety, anywhere from 6,000 to 7,000 a month, up to as much as 20, 25,000 a month for a three bedroom lease in Seaport, depending on the building, location, size, amenities, it depends. Now, like I mentioned earlier in this video, a couple things you want to know and take into consideration before you move to Seaport that you can't really find out just by looking at listings on Zillow and looking at pictures. So, Seaport is very new. Seaport has you know, been this big development in Boston and people have very different opinions on it. They either love it or they hate it. This is Boston and people will be very brutally honest with you about how they feel towards things. Everyone recognizes that it is expensive. It's one of the newest parts of town. You know, it's expensive to buy, to lease, to go out and eat, get food. It's an expensive part of town. But people just have different opinions on, you know, how they really feel about Seaport. Some people think it's really cool and modern and the epitome of luxury living. Some people think it lacks character, it lacks personality. You know, it's, it's up to you. There really is no right or wrong answer here. Those are just kind of different opinions people will give you if you ask about Seaport. Now, like I also said before, Seaport is built on literally fake land. It was landfill that they used to build up the piers and build the foundation for the buildings and development going on in Seaport. It's man-made, it's fake land. It used to be a bunch of industrial space, parking lots, warehouses, and now it's a luxury living community. Um, it was man-made with these piers that kind of jet out further into the ocean to expand the shoreline. Um, with that, stormy weather, flooding can be an issue in the streets and in some of the buildings along the water. So keep that in mind, you know, you're on the water and it's fake land. Also, with being on the water, Seaport can be very windy. I mean, sometimes I'm walking through Seaport with clients and I'm like, it feels like it's 10 degrees colder than the rest of Boston because it gets very windy. You have wind coming in from the ocean, it's windy, it's chilly, especially during the winter time, Seaport can be cold and windy. Traffic throughout Seaport can be very frustrating, especially during those peak hours of rush hour traffic, but really that goes for a lot of places in Boston. It's not just Seaport, there is a, you know, a lot of traffic that you will see in Boston. So again, keep that in mind if you're moving to the area. So just a few things to consider before you make that move to Seaport, whether you are purchasing, leasing, whether you want an industrial loft or you know a newly built luxury condo, Seaport's got a lot to offer. So if you would like help with that process of purchasing, leasing, moving to Seaport or anywhere else in Boston and want some support with that, give me a call, shoot me a text, send an email or a DM, however you like to communicate, I'm easy to reach. So let's get in touch and start that conversation. So thank you for watching, I appreciate it. It helps me out tremendously if you go down below to hit that like button and that subscribe button right down below. Um, helps me grow tremendously, so thank you for that and I hope you take care, have a great day and I will see you in the next video right here on the Living Boston channel.